Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Earbones Podcast. I'm Brandon. And I'm Stick. And we're the only podcast that thinks Peter Parker should stay dead. It's a true story. I'd like to go back to that issue and just stay there at that point in time. He should just never existed. Before we get into our books this week, have you ever heard of Bovril? No. B-O-V-R-I-L. Well, Bovril. I, know that is. I was watching some British show, something from our friends across the pond, and they talked about Bovril. It's a thick, salty meat extract. That comes packaged in this like bottle, and you can like dilute it with water to drink it. Like apparently they they drink it when it's cold. That's the most disgusting. Thing I've I ever want to life. try it really well, bad. I don't think you do. They don't really sell it in America. I read because of like mad cow disease. Well, They're scared of mad cow disease. It, that's pretty. I simple. want to try some Bovril. Well, road trip. I mean, I I think it's went like it's not as popular anymore. I don't think it's ever popular. I mean, I don't that know. sounds disgusting. Uh, we don't. You don't know it is like across the pond. It's true. That's true. But I do want to try Bovril. That, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Do you, you don't want to try. Just, you wouldn't try Bovril. Shit, you don't drink. They said it, it's, it's it can also be mixed with milk, but that's less known. Oh my god! Meat milk? <laughs> Talk about protein. No, no, no. Okay, never. Well, let's start on books. I just read Captain Marvel number one, the new Captain Marvel. Oh, you did, did you? What do you mean? You watched me read? I guess I was reading something. I was confused. Um, I'm confused. I'm confused, and I was actually on her last. Volume. She lives in the in the Statue of Liberty. She does live in the Statue of Liberty. Whose apparently. kid is that? I believe that was one. She lived in an apartment complex, last volume, and I believe that was like one of the tenants' daughter. How did? Maybe? But who's the daughter's mom? Like, how did? I don't know. Does she live? Does that kid live in the Statue of Liberty too? Um, I believe from the story I got from this is that she is. I thought she was like babysitting her. Uh, her mom's there. She's... Her mom was there because she lost her job, or something. So I, see, I read there. that and I had no idea what was going on. Are you dumb? No, I read it through twice. I even flipped back to <laughs> really? see if I missed something. It's I a... didn't understand. It says thank you for letting us stay with you while mom gets her job stuff worked out. Uh, see, I thought that meant like she was out. At, like, working. Her mom was out working at that moment. The not corner, that she was yeah. there. I see. I didn't, like, I don't understand why this is light here and then this is dark. If they're in the same bed, I mean. I don't know. Yeah, Another thing. I didn't know Rhodey and her were dating. I didn't either. What? Why? It's so weird. I mean, it's cool. It, it kind of makes sense. They're both pilots. Yeah, I mean, he's a little arrogant about it. I think it was joking around. I don't know how you read it. I don't know. Maybe because I, just, I, mean, cause I just don't like Rhodey. Like, I took it as Why like don't a... you like Rhodey? You just don't like Don Cheadle. That's true. Think of him as Terrence Howard. <laughs> I also had a problem with the way that they're every number one seems to start in the future and flash back. Yeah, I don't... Like, Why? Why does it have to do it? It doesn't even make sense. I so confused. One thing I did like was when Iron Man and her were talking... And they're fighting the criminals at the same time. That was a nice touch. Yeah. So just a boring back and forth scene. Uh, who's that girl that's dying? I don't uh, know who that is either. I don't know. There was like an old lady. See, last volume she had a brain tumor. That was the whole thing. I knew that. And she because couldn't use her they powers. Had, they had a crossover with Avengers Assemble. Exactly. Now, I didn't read that. But I guess they fixed it. Uh, I Everything's good. Yeah, it's Brain's good. A-OK. I guess. It's, I but know. she's going into space to be with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, to find herself. Yeah, I'm not jumping on it, but if you remain on it, I might read I'm it. I'm going to remain on it. I mean, I like her. I and think I, she's a not good because it's Marvel. Not because it's the best book, but because I pretty much am on every other book. <laughs> and, and the art's okay. I mean, there's no reason. I mean, I'd get on it. Yeah, the art's fine. There's no big problem with the art. I mean, it looks like it's going to be good. Hopefully. Like the uh, what's going on currently, not the past. I don't know who her whole team was there either. Yeah, they kind of skimmed over that. I knew that weird goat looking guy from somewhere. I don't know where though. But yeah, um, I'd I'd jump on it and give it at least five issues. See where it goes. Pass. Well, again, you're on thirty eight thousand books. So. Um, sixty three. Exactly. I think is the total number. But one that ended was X Men Legacy, and they released one more issue, X Men Legacy three hundred. And it was actually really good. Really? I came into it expecting something horrible. See, I didn't want to read it in case it spoiled something for me. I mean, I guess you already kind of spoiled Legacy for me. Yeah, well, you wanted to know. I know. I didn't know I was going to read it. Yeah. Um, it's basically about this X-Man that I don't know about, that you wouldn't know about. 
It's basically they created this new X Man, and his name, oh man, what is it? Um, something weird. But his power is that he gets forgotten. <laughs> like that's his power is that he's not noticed. Oh. Um, what, what so like for? so like the kid in Legacy who takes credit for everything. Oh, his name's Forget Me Not. Is what his name is. Forget Me Not. Forget Me Not is his name. And, it, yeah, it is basically his power. He sneaks around, and nobody, you know, everybody forgets about him. So he's like, and he talks about how he kind of lost his place in history. He's talking to this girl who's trying to break into the Jean Grey school, but if there's some type of Chitauri or some type of, um, not Chitauri, that obviously that's a cinematic universe, some type of alien, um, security Grace. system. Oh. On, on the Jean Grey school. And the more you want to get away, the more it sucks you in. So he's just talking to her, trying to get her mind off of it, talking about how he, you know, has always been forgotten, she doesn't know who he is, she has some facial scarring from something that happened, she was bullied, maybe, something happened. Um, so was it like a one-shot? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. But then he goes on to talk about, this guy talks about how he was part of all the wars, he talks about his place in all the wars, but then talks about how it hurt him the most on uh, M-Day, not M-Day, when... Well, on M-Day, nothing happened to him. He was fine. But he tells about he's the one that was kind of... He took care of all the big things. Like, when they are fighting the big wars, he sneaks around because nobody sees him. And he does all these things to help out the X-Men. But nobody really knows who he is. Because they forget about him. But he says it hit him really hard when Professor X died. Because Professor X... And when Professor X met him, he put a timer in his own head to go off, like, every day to remind him that he existed. So Professor X was the only one who constantly knew that this guy existed. Wow. And then when Professor X died, he figured that he wouldn't be noticed anymore. He's like, he's like I know there's telepaths out there, like Psylocke and all them, but it just, you know, it wouldn't be the same. So then he wants to get rid of his powers. He knows Weapon Omega, who is friends with um, Mimic. You remember Mimic, the one who has all the powers of yeah. all the... They're friends together. And he knows that Weapon Omega could take away his powers. And he goes to confront him. They somehow talk him out of it. Like about there's some it's beautiful art here though. That is pretty nice. But they talk they there's a weird conflict between the new X Men like Scott Summers looking for him and the guy ends up being forgotten and he talks him out of everything and you know kind of guards them by saying you know he, Weapon Omega takes them as power so they're forgotten and the X Men just like oh okay nothing here I guess it was a false alarm and they go away. Um, eventually he's like all right I'm gonna think about it if I still want to do this and then as he's thinking about it Mimic and Weapon Omega forget about him they fly away. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, all right, I guess it, it's better to be forgotten and help people than to not help people and be recognized. And that's kind of how the book ends. That's interesting. It, it was very good. And at the end, the girl ends up slipping out because he slips in. And because he slipped into the the security system, it forgets her. But then he's like, don't worry about me. It'll probably forget me. <laughs> but we don't know. I mean, she might have died. But, <laughs> but he taught her this like amazing life lesson. And as she's walking away, she forgets everything that he said because she forgets him. That's horrible, like in like a tragic yeah, way. It is, but it it was great. I really enjoyed it. I had to spend a lot of time on it because it was huge. It was four ninety nine. Was what do you think it was worth the price? Um, that's a tough one. I don't know. I think it was, although it would be a much better bargain to pick it up out of like a dollar bin or somewhere half off. Because I have the rest of X Men Legacy. This current volume, obviously not the other 200 issues. Yeah. It was good to have, even though it didn't really talk about David at all. Yeah, it seemed kind of strange to include that in the series, you know. Yeah, I didn't think they were going to do it. But apparently they figured, oh, 299 issues, we better throw another one out there. How do you feel about X-Force? Oh, boy. Well, don't, don't give me that. Oh, boy. What? I don't know, guy. What What's the issue here? Uh, what issue did you have with it? What issue could you possibly have with it? Uh, the whole issue. You had an issue with Cable addressing everyone. That was awesome. It was okay. You had a problem with Cable being a badass. That was awesome. Why well, I don't understand how he didn't blow up. I like that he took... He body slid out. He can, he can do that? Yeah. Okay. See, I don't know these things because I don't <laughs> like Cable. Did you, didn't you see in the, in the issue where he says body slide by two and he's gone? Like him and another person, he can, he can say body slide, and then, you know, if he says body slide by two, another person comes with him, body slide by three, he can take two with him. Well, how about things I liked? What did you like? I liked the the meme 
Is that yes. her name? Yes, yeah, who, like, is in, is in all the computers. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's like, a super mutant thing. Mm-hmm. I like that. I think that's an interesting way to go. And the fact that there are more of them. I like it a lot because it feels less like an X-Men book. The past X-Forces have felt a lot like an X-Men book. This actually feels like an X-Force book. Well, from what I got from the story, that Maro or whatever. Maro. Maro, she's, she's not really a mutant. I thought she lost her powers on M Day, but then like got them back somehow. I that, but he said that they like did something to her DNA where she's not really a mutant, but she, but then lost her powers, sort of. I don't know. I must have skimmed over that. Jeez, guy, come on! I <laughs> All mean, I care about is Cable. Of course, all clearly. I care about is Cable. I, I want to know what's going on with Hope as well. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, Phantom X was like a super genius. He's very smart, um, and very French still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read his well, it's parts he's, sometimes. It's written by Cy Spurrier, who is British himself. So he knows how the French would be. Makes sense. He's super cocky. I mean, I'm not going to drop it. At least for two issue five? It has, you got you to give at least a five. It has good build-up right now. Like I feel like it's... I like the art a lot, too. It's different. I don't like That's it. That's what I like. I like I, it because it's different. I really don't like it. Especially Cable. Like He's just an eyes. Like, his every, chin's too big. Every time he's on the page, I, I kind of wince. I think his chin's too big is what it is. I like it, because I think it's different. Um, the weird guy that he blew up. Um, and now we have this new villain, apparently, Volga. Yeah. Yevgeny Malovich. I have no idea who he is. Yeah. I mean, it was okay. I'll, I'll stay on it. I won't drop it, but... I liked that they said the Cable didn't have a soul, though. Because he went to inhabit Cable's soul, and he's like, this is empty, there's nothing in here. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't understand that. I mean, he's been a soldier his whole life. He probably lost it a long time ago. Oh, I thought there was, like, some... Like, that's not really Cable. You it's a life model decoy. LMDs everywhere. I mean, that'd be a twist. If you call that, I'm dropping the book. <laughs> um, Superior Spider-Man. Wow. Um, I really, really liked it. I didn't think I was going to, but right now it's kind of making me sad it's going to end. I like. I mean, like we said at the beginning, uh, we want Auk to stay as Spider-Man. Yes. Which is not going to happen. Well, right now, I'm still not sure how they're bringing Peter back. Yeah, well, he's coming back somehow. Yeah, we know, but it doesn't... He's probably going to come back in 2099. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome if Spock took over 2099 Spider-Man? That would be cool, but I still feel like 2099 was in here for no reason. Like, his whole story arc in this could be wiped out and it wouldn't make a difference. See, but I thought the fact that he went back before was to stop something from destroying the future. And that would be what Spider Man's doing now. I don't know. I don't like twenty nine nine Spider Man. I know you. I don't, don't. like this twenty nine Spider Man. I read his first like couple of the first series and they weren't bad, but um, Goblin was awesome in this. Green Goblin is amazing in this. Like just killing it. Just be every everything was covered. Every aspect of everything was just covered. He just wants to destroy everything. Everything, everything a part of him. It was fantastic. And the scene where um, uh, Spidey's holding, I guess, Ox only like friend, sort of, after he kind of gives his life to save him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Kind was of brought that, back to Gwen Stacy, sort of, but you know, not as... That was when all the, uh, like, the arms yeah. that, that, that Goblin infected were coming out of Spidey. Yeah. yeah that, that was a good scene. That was a beautiful scene. And then we see that it, it's not um, Jonah Jameson controlling the spider slayers. Nope. It's Green Goblin. Yeah, it's He's Norman amazing. Osborn. Is it Norman? Is that the old word it is? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, he they thought he was dead, but it ended up being... Hopefully he just, you know, quits being a bad guy and brings back his own version of Thunderbolts. They're my favorite. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. I'm sad it's going to end, and I hope it's not like a a flop ending like some things. Like everything. Like every Bendis book. Ever. Sticking with Spider-Man. Superior Foes, which you do not read. I'm not on If that. you recall, at the end of the last issue, Bullseye appeared. Yeah, you Remember, showed me that. I told you about that. He has another kind of full page in this. And at the beginning, it's Bullseye in his full glory. W- against Boomerang in his full glory. <laughs> really? Like, Bullseye shooting him, and Boomerang kind of feels it, and he just throws a Boomerang, and it hits the bullet. Like, just throws it behind his back, and hits the bullet. Happens another time. He's running out of he's running out of Boomerang, though. So. Eventually, Bullseye does get the best of him. Um, they're, like, in a church, you know, just like the Daredevil movie. And... Bullseye's like at the door and Boomerang's inside and he throws a Boomerang and Bullseye's like, you missed. And he goes, yeah, okay. 
Obviously, Boomerang's coming back. So as you see it coming back, you're expecting, oh, it's going to get him, it's going to get him. Bullseye just closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, you really are the best assassin. Because all it is is Bullseye has heard the stories of Boomerang saying, oh, Bullseye is just a second-rate assassin. He's not the best in the world. He's like, the only reason he got the job with Kingpin is because he's manically crazy. So that whole issue is just Boomerang versus... No, we find out that Boomerang, or the, the, the Bullseye was an LMD. Oh? It's an LMD of Bullseye. That makes sense. Hired by the Owl. It's, it's an intertwining storyline that's been since the beginning that I would have to sit here and explain to you. Understandably. Um, the Owl hired Boomerang and the Sinister Six at the time to steal the head of Silvermane, the head of the Magia. It's just a head. Sure. Okay. All right. And Boomerang doesn't think it exists, so he ends up just stealing a crazy, super crazy painting, I believe is how it works. And the Owl wants the painting, which... Um, Chameleon already came and stole it off of Boomerang. <laughs> He's like, that's my painting. I want that. It seems very convoluted it, it, story. It, no, it's all com- it's, it makes a lot of sense. Just the way I'm explaining it to you quickly, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little rough. I, I, I feel you. Um, Boomerang also, it looked like he killed the Shocker at one point, who now found the head of Silvermane and is greeted by his friend Hydro Man, <laughs> who comes in here and he talks about being a former alcoholic and he's saved now. He's great. Shocker helped save him. They just want to hang out watch movies. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a bromance. Um, eventually, Hydro Man just disappears down in the toilet. Makes be- sense. Because he wants to, like, tell people about Silvermane, and <laughs> he wants to become a boss, is what it was. Um, eventually, Boomerang figures it all out, gets away, tricks Chameleon into show it. He-, he told Al that Chameleon acted like him and stole the painting. It wasn't him that stole the painting. So he goes and has Chameleon, he plays Chameleon, like in the game of Warriors, to to fake like he's him. And then the owl busts in, and they're going to kill him. But Boomerang gets greeted by his friends, the Senator Six, and a bus full of ninjas, apparently. Ninja kids. I don't know what it's about. What is going on? Exactly. Sweet Jesus. I don't know what it's about either, but I love this book. It seems good. Two ninety nine. dollars it's, it's, it's nice having like a villain... It story, is, yeah. and also, I mean, other than it being two ninety nine, there's so much in it. Every issue, you're not, like, you know how some books you read, you're like, wow, I'm flipping a lot of pages here. <laughs> this one, it's like, I haven't flipped a page in ten minutes. Like, there's just so much to read, there's so much put into it. It's very good. I just hope there's enough people reading it that it's going to stick around. Yeah, that always worries me, you know. Because this is number nine, and I mean, now's where we would get to an area where it would start to be worrying about it. What do you got? Um, how about Mighty Avengers? I don't know. I don't read it. I know you don't. She-Hulk's in it. She-Hulk is in it. And I know you're not going to believe when I say this, but I enjoyed this issue. Oh, I mean, I believe it, it. it. was good. I like bad books, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many it's eight, honestly. I'm, like, the only guy on this, so. They actually make it just for you. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, I think at the back it has a letter that says, like, to stick. Probably. You know what? I do. <laughs> it is back here in the... I Thank you for being the only one to read us. Oh, there it is. But this story had a very Silver Age feel to it. Um, a lot of it deals with Blue Marvel. I don't know who that is. I don't either. Apparently he's old. I don't know. But like as an old guy or an old character? He's an old character, but he like doesn't age. Like normal. So he's an invincible. He's, he's an immortal character. Well, I wouldn't say he's immortal. I think he's aged slower than others. Looks like Moon Knight. Him? Yeah, who's that? That's that's Blue Marvel. Yeah, it looks like Moon Knight. Yeah, he's... I, I don't even know what his power is, but this Dr. Positron... I had to have run into this guy before. He's, his name sounds familiar. I think he was like an old... I don't even know. Maybe he might be Golden Age. I just don't know. He had a miniseries or something. But this Dr. Positron, like, traps name. him, She-Hulk... I know, that's what... It, it sounded kind of corny. That's why I liked it. And, uh... Her name's not Captain Marvel anymore. Monica Rambo or something. Monica Rambo. Rambo? I don't know. Rambo. But Dr. Positron ends up being his son who's trying to bring back his brother from the neutral zone. Wait, hold on. Is that Monica Rambo like the black Captain Marvel? Yes. What's she do now? Does she still have powers? Yes. Like the, the Captain Marvel powers? Yeah. Well, she can still turn into all wavelengths of like... Yes, Exactly. That's Cause, exactly. Because that's the Captain Marvel she was. She never really had the cosmic power that they did. Yeah. She was a separate, like, it, it was almost, it shouldn't have even been Captain Marvel. Yeah, I liked her, though. I mean, she added, her powers were unique. So I, like her, I liked her powers. I've always liked her powers. They gave a nice twist to it. I, 
I can't remember what she's called in this. But there was a lot more She-Hulk fighting. Uh, there's actually some action. Is she cross-eyed? No, she's not cross-eyed. Well, how does that guy look like Rocketeer? That's what I thought first time I saw it, too. I was like, huh. And the white tiger pretty much tells her god spirit to stop being a bitch and let her control him. Quit being a bitch and pill me up? Pretty much. I mean, it added, it ended on a cliffhanger, so hopefully it keeps this pace and keeps being this readable. That, that's three ninety nine, isn't it? I believe. Yes. That's it, tough. It is tough. That's, I don't know how you made it eight issues at three ninety nine. It's for the She-Hulk. And I just want to say that next issue, Ronan is unmasked. Like the accuser? No. No, this guy who was dressed up as spider, as like a fake Spider-Man in the first issues... Also, I'm pretty sure like the first variant for this had Spider Man on the team. He's not on the team. He, What's going on? I don't know. This is it's 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 bad. But you like if it's a good read, I mean this it's worth is, it. This is the only good read. Eight issues in and this is the first one I can I say. Know, you I like the last one. Just because She Hulk was in it. There was five panels of She Hulk. This actually has like half the book. Well, of I mean, you She-Hulk said in it. even if it's the worst book you've ever read, if She Hulk's in it, you're gonna keep getting it. Yeah, I have a couple Doc Samsons with uh, She Hulk in it, so. Guess I gotta I need to talk to Sam. Yeah, but don't get this. Just don't get it. Just let it die, <laughs> please. Trust me, I'm staying away from that. Um, I believe this book is ending at some point, shortly. What is it? Nightwing. Oh, he's, he's not dead. dead. Well, he's not dead in this, but this is continuing the story. If, if you remember, I told you Zaz killed his young girl's parents, yeah. and then she grabbed his nightsticks and ran out. Mm-hmm. He ends up catching her, and like stopping her from killing Zaz. But the whole story is just, like, him reliving his loss and him talking about his loss of his parents and telling her how it's going to be okay and, like, wh- what his life could have been like if he would have chose a different path. The art is beautiful. The story is beautiful. I've seen that page. And it's so simplistic. Like, there's not... It's all inner dialogue, but it's just, like, what you could have been, you know? Your parents wouldn't be proud of you. And just these little bits all around the book and just collages of anything that could be anything. And it's just so good. I just, I absolutely love it. He fights Zaz, kills Zaz. Well, doesn't kill Zaz, obviously. <laughs> fights Zaz, takes Zaz down. Any story with Zaz has to be And then good. has beautiful conversation with this girl. And he gives her the bracelet that he took off his mom. The night she died, he gave it to her. And then when she died, he took it back. And he's had it ever since. He gave it to her and said, this is a reminder of what could be. Of you can be happy. Wow. It was gorgeous. I loved this book. It was fantastic. And then he ends up, um... Sending a message to Sonia, who lives in Gotham. I don't know who that is. I don't. His ex-girlfriend, apparently. He's going to hang out. and I don't know. It sounds good. He talks about always catching people when they fall. And it was just a beautiful book. And for two ninety nine, this was way worth it. Although the cover has nothing to do with anything inside of it. Yeah, that kind of confused me. Like, if people buy books by covers, they would not have gotten this. And they would have <laughs> severely missed out. Um... If you know anything about Nightwing, even if you don't know the story, and you like Nightwing, I would recommend picking this up. Just as a, just a, it's almost a one shot. You kind of have to know what's going on, but they kind of inform you anyway. All right. A book I wouldn't recommend picking up: Superboy Twenty Nine. It's garbage. It's I horrible. You were off that. Just dropped it. You, I thought you dropped it like three three months ago. It's ending. I wanted to stick on it. I can't. Not even worth I it. I can't. <laughs> you remember how last time I told you about one of these? I didn't know who Superboy was. Yeah. I remember now. He's an LMD. No. It's Superman's son, taken from the future, into the into a weird, like, pocket dimension, trained by this guy, to kill all metas. This sounds like a Buffy story. It's a Marv Wolfman story. An angel story, actually. It's a Marv Wolfman story. And it's garbage. <laughs> um, he's working with his own legion that he met. Superboy is his own legion? He, he, yes, and he's convincing the Teen Titans that they're his legion from the future. Because you remember, the first Superboy was from the future. Apparently, you it's impossible to understand this if you're not reading Teen Titans. Even if you were, you might not understand I it. I thought Teen Titans was canceled. It's still running now, apparently. Wow. Oh. Because it, they reference it every time in this. They talk about something that just happened in Teen Titans. I don't know what it is. Why would you do that? I mean, this is a garbage book for garbage human beings. <laughs> and it's bad. Would you recommend it, though? Um, if you want to have a bad time. That's yes. what I usually look for, so... The worst part is, he's coming back from the future, and he's in current timeline now. Which, 
I, I read at the end, and I was like, this whole book sucks. The whole thing sucks. I flipped the last page. I was like, oh, he's back now. Should I read another one? Nope. Dropped it. It's only two ninety nine, guy. I'm on 52 titles that go towards a discount. Probably for the best. Then. And I'm on 63 or 62 titles total. I'm sorry. It was so bad for you. Oh, it was horrible. you have any bad books? Other than Mighty Avengers? Uh, not any really bad ones. You didn't ones. like Hawkeye. Let's be real. Okay, Hawkeye. First off, I think that's like a Saga cover ripoff. Yeah. Or Foley Cooley, but you won't understand that. But... You just big-timed me? Yeah, I just big-timed you. How's it feel, little man? But seriously, you don't read Hawkeye. Not at all. It's it's hipster. Can I just set up the last end of the last book? No. (laughs) This guy. This guy. I don't know how I work with you. But at the end of the last book, Hawkeye and his brother get shot in the face. Hold on. Hawkeye has a brother? Yeah. I can't remember his name. Is he a... Is he Bowers? No, I think it's like a homeless bum or something. Hmm, even better. Yeah, it makes sense. They get shot in the face, and at the end of the book, they're laying there in blood, and like the whole... With guns. Yes. Because there's, there's this like villain guy, I can't remember his name, he's got like a teardrop on his face, like he's... Oh, like he went to jail? Yeah, he... some time. Yeah, but no, sort of. And that's how it ends. Cliffhanger. I mean, so, so, it's good. Then they throw this at me. So then they give you this, this kid's dog story. This, sh- I mean, it was good. I like how it made, I mean, I might be taking this way too deep, but Hawkeye's the the main dog, and the fact that he keeps trying even though he has no powers, and which I assume the, the animals that are captured are the Avengers, and how even though he has no powers, he still helps and... They're thankful for that. I mean, I'd like to believe that that's what it, <laughs> that, like, you, that you're reading it well. I hope it is, but I don't think it is. That's what, that's what I got, and I thought, like, the little dog was Kate, but, again, I, I might Kate just... Kate Bishop being Hawk Girl. Yes. Like, like Hawkeye, not the Hawk Guy. Yes, yes. She was in Young Avengers. Yes. That's how I know her. Yes. Um. And then he wakes up at the end, and it was all a dream? Yeah. See, there, there was an issue earlier about... Hawkeye's dog. I think he called it Pizza. I don't remember his dog's name. It was no. I saw I saw a review on that on the internet of this on YouTube, and somebody said I think it was Sleepy Reader said that there's a group of dogs that like call themselves the Bros, and yes. they call they say dog instead of bro. Yeah, all all in Hawkeye, all the like the Russian thugs say bro, like they say, "Come on, bro, what are you doing?" So, bro? so these dogs call themselves like yeah. dogs. Yeah, um, dog. Those dogs. Or dead dogs. Like, it, it's funny. That, I, that's funny. I liked it. That and they, they're they wearing, like, track suits because the Russian gangsters all wear track suits and say, bro. Like, <laughs> it's consistent. It, it's it's good. I mean, I did like that. It, it was... See, if I was reading Hawkeye, I might have enjoyed it. Or I would have came at it with such vehement hate, I would have just been yelling and cursing. I feel like stuff. it should have been an annual. Like I think it would have made me drop it. Like, if I was on this book, then again, if I was on it, if you say it's as good as it is, maybe it wouldn't. But if I got this, like, if one of my books that I read just switched all of a sudden randomly to a cartoon dog story, I'd be pretty upset. See, now, now if he tied this in, like, like since he's laying what there... If, what ble- if there's no mention of it? But if he's laying there <laughs> bleeding out and he's, like, dreaming this, how he's, like, the underdog or whatever, you know, take it for what it underdog. is. Underdog! Sort of, because they're actual dogs. That's funny, but, I mean... I don't, I don't know. know, man. I don't know. It was okay. Would you recommend it? For somebody to read to their kid. <laughs> uh, no, because the kid's not going to have any idea. There's, like, not enough... I mean, you'd get more out of Frosty the Snowman than this. But There's a book? There's a book. No, I mean, Frosty like... Frosty has a book? Like a cartoon with the stupid Cindy who goes in the greenhouse what? and makes him melt. Why would Santa go to the greenhouse? Frosty, guy. Frosty goes in the greenhouse. Cindy goes in the greenhouse. Who the hell's Cindy? The, the dying sick girl who has a cold and she's going to die. You never saw Frosty the Snowman. Don't. It just make you angry. I mean, I guarantee I have. But, for real, if you're not on Hawkeye, you should be on Hawkeye. It, it's really good. And it's only two ninety nine. You're, you're barking up the wrong tree here. Yeah, I know you hate it, but... I don't, I don't hate Hawkeye. Well, let's just say, there was Hawkeye and Gambit. You went one way, and one's ended, and one's... The one's good one. book ended. Yeah, right. But... Gambit was awesome. You're reading those after you're done with Legacy. Oh, Lord. You are. That's what you're reading next. I do have some of them, but... Seriously, get on Hawkeye. I mean, it's probably a weird place to jump on since we're right in the middle a, of that cliffhanger. Right after a kid's dog story, hop on it. <laughs> <laughs>
But hopefully it gets better. JLA. I have two words for that. Amazingly disappointing. Those are the same two words I would give you. Because it was all... Didn't happen. But it was so good up until that point where they revealed it didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, why couldn't they just let Stargirl have that one thing? Yeah, and it seems like as soon as they, it, they as soon as they reveal that it wasn't Stargirl to be in the hero, they're like, "Hold on, though, Wonder Woman's the hero." Like they just that quickly, they're off of her. I, I like I'm. Once I found out of the dream, I'm like, I don't even want to read this anymore. So you don't, you didn't even see that Wonder I, Woman. I did. They're like, we got to get her lasso or something along those lines. I did. I was like, I was so. The art in this was still beautiful. It was, but that's. I, I like the moment. With the firestorms, even though, like I said, even though it's still a dream, it's just bad. I just I hated that it was a dream. I hated it, but it, the the art's beautiful. I mean, I like the art a lot. In this. Was, I've I've never been that disappointed reading the end of a story. Like, is this is this the end? No, I think there's one more. But I mean, I don't think Star Girl's like. <laughs> well, this is concluded in Forever Evil, so you can check that out. Yeah, I'll let you read it, but maybe I don't want to. Seriously, why I I can't. At this point, they just need to kill off Stargirl now because they just destroyed her as a human being. I thought they would have. Like I, I thought that would have been a fitting end. Like you know, she gave her all to to stop Firestorm from exploding. You know. I mean, it would have been disappointing because we've come to love Stargirl, but it would have been a better story. But I feel like doing that just like backtracks so much. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure that she still, but it didn't really have as much weight. I just hope before. moving forward she can be a better character for it. Like, maybe she learned something mentally to help her. I don't know. She's still on, um... Well, apparently she had some, uh... Martian Manhunter's powers. Was that all a dream, too? I think that was a dream, too. That's stupid. Exactly. So stupid. Um, JL3K. Oh, Jesus, sweet mother. Uh, I don't even know what I wrote about it. Probably bad stuff. Uh, I had a little build-up. And there was a new enemy revealed, Kali, and we only saw her back, but she seemed like a big deal. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this person? Exactly. Yeah, keep going. There she is. Oh, yeah. Looks like a weird dragon type thing. Six yeah. arms. Yeah, I, I don't know who that is either. But I like the actual, maybe not the event progression, but the continuity progression of they're not clones. They're just altered DNA. I did like that. I will give it that. And they said that they're going to make more, and I like how they're, they're just they're just keep shaping the story and making it more interesting. In fact, the people had to die for them yes. to be. Yes. I thought that was, like, deep. It's, just, it's getting more deep in the, like, it's like a sci-fi book. It's, like, very science fiction. It is. I'm still not sure about that god with the weird um, attachment issues who wanted... Oh, Locust. Pretty much bone. Green Locust, Lantern. the one who just wanted to pound Green Lantern left and right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The one who just warps reality. That's the one you're talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we have a new member of the Justice League 3000, Firestorm. At yeah. The end. And he seemed like a cocky jerk. He did. and he, But he looks pretty badass. Yeah, man. I'll give him that. I mean, so are you giving it one more issue? And if the next. Like, are you sold on this book yet? I'm not. I thought the whole them not quite being clones really brought it together. Like yeah. it, it gave it more. It's not like, hey, he died. Let's make another one. Yeah, it's, there's actually the consequences, there's, there's consequences of somebody for dying. Them being. Yes, I like it. And even though I said I'm giving it till five, I'm definitely gonna be giving it longer unless the next issue brings me something that I'm just like, what? This is garbage. And I mean, I react pretty heavily on little things. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I. I'll give a next issue, and then I'll decide. I'll make the decision next Friday. Or, well, that Friday. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely staying on it for a bit. But, like I said, my moods change very quickly. Something could happen. Like, they could just be like, oh, no, this is the real Superman. And I'll just be like, fuck this book! And I'll just <laughs> drop it. Like, that's just what would happen to me. It just turns into Superboy. Ugh. Ooh. Fantastic Four. Um, pretty good. How do you feel about Franklin's world coming back? Uh, if I'm tell me if I'm wrong, Franklin's world was when Avengers was rebooted, in the Heroes Were Born. Remember? I think. Oh, bad, bad. Drawn by Layfield, all of them, all of them. Well, you'd love that. <laughs> well, let's not get out of our Cable. Tables. I like Cable. I love Cable. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm not saying that the the art was always the best. Well, I'm sick of Franklin. Can I just say it like for real? 
I'm sick of Franklin being a bitch. We get like, it. Franklin, be a hero or shut the fuck up. Those are your two options. He's, but nothing ever comes from him. He's like this super, but nothing. Like glass volume. What the- Let him grow. Let him grow up. Yeah. Have, have him alter his own reality. He's been eight for 3,000 yes. years. Have him alter his own reality so he can go in time, age, learn things, and have him come back as a mainstay character. Let him be a main part of Fantastic Four. Yeah, just, like... Do fucking something with him. I feel like the problem with Fantastic Four is it's the same family story. Like, it's always dealing with over the kids. Over and over again. Like, anymore. Yes. You know what? Have Valeria grow up and get pregnant at 16. Boom. With Doom's son. Whoa. Whoa. You mean Doom is having sex with her? Or no, Doom's no, son no, is no, having no. sex with her? Doom's son is having okay. sex with her. <laughs> okay. Doom would be locked Doom's up. Doom's like their godfather, isn't she? Um, I think so, yeah. Um, I like how it seems to be written through Sue's diary. That That is nice. That's a nice, nice change touch. from that. Um, Johnny's powers are gone. Yeah, that was interesting. He what, was crying. Yeah, what's the bigger picture here? Where are we heading? That's what I thought as I was reading it. When I finished, I was like, what, what are we doing here? Uh, I like the cameos, like Wasp showing up, and you know it really gave the whole attack on New York a realistic feel. Blue, Blue Marvel. Marvel is in there exactly. <laughs> so is uh, Giant, Giant Man. Man and the Beetle. I didn't even notice. Actually, it. actually, I think that's Mach three or Mach five or Mach seven. I don't know what number he is now. Yeah, he's probably in the thirteen. Daredevil's in there. Daredevil's not helping anybody. No, the cameos weren't nice. But, I mean, we don't really know what happened to Johnny, other than that he saved, he killed everybody but lost his powers. Yeah, I mean... Appar- but apparently, like, th- that's the thing that happened, is he lost his powers. We saw in the first issue that they all kind of, like, Reed didn't have control of his powers anymore. He was a bumbling idiot. Is this the same damn story as the first, as the last volume? I think they need, like, lasting consequences. Like, I felt like if Johnny, he gets his power back, but he's... He can't turn him off, or he's, like, disfigured. So I feel like that's, like, his... <laughs> Realistically, that's, like, his thing. You're pretty sadistic right now. That you want Johnny to be either disfigured... Well, he's a pretty boy, and he, you know... I think that would change his character. Um, Sue, Franklin needs to die. There you go. She no, hates everything. No, 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 listen. We need Johnny to never get his powers back. Franklin to go forward in time, alter his own reality, come back as a member of the Fantastic Four. Boom. We just need Franklin versus Cable. Where does this come from? I don't know. Just two things I hate. Maybe if Cable... One will kill each other Maybe off. if Cable still had his, like, Omega-level powers, maybe. I would like to see that. But he's a, a, a shade of himself anymore. Uh, we want to talk about that, uh... That IDW book there. Yeah. I hopped on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But you were on it before. I or was. Or a different volume? I think this is a different volume. What number is that? 32. So it's probably the same No volume. way is that a different volume. I don't remember. How long has it been since you were on it? I don't... Years... Oh, that art. God, it's beautiful. It looks too cartoony. No, 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 no. I mean, it's it's honestly way better than I expected. Like, for what it is. Oh, why? Why does it look a little kid? I like it. I, it's a nice... I don't know, man. I think it's a nice style. What's going on in it? Well... S- sell me. Sell me on the turf. All right, well, first I jumped on us. It's the end of an arc, so mm. bear with me. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can start next issue and you'll be good to go. I'm good. But sorry. Um, I guess the turtles are hiding out in some in April O'Neil's barn. So it's kind of like the first turtles movie, and like this giant bird thing attacks them. Sold. With like I don't know, uh, and they fight. You know, you didn't see that coming, everybody. And Splinter gives like a life lesson after they win. I, I, hold on. Michelangelo's running bitches over with bikes. At what point? Are they not going to be teenage anymore? They're always going to be teenagers. Why? Explain it to me. Why? Well, realistically, they're not... I don't think they're, like, actually teenagers. I think they're... I don't know how old they are. Exactly. Give me a little bit of continuity updates. Well, from my understanding, I don't think they actually aged. I think the ooze is what... Ivan Ooze. Ivan Ooze. Oh, my God. That brings me back. Oh, but I love that movie. This was really good. I'm definitely going to stick on it, and hopefully... You really did a great job selling me there. Well, you know what? You already hate the turtles. So I don't like, hate the turtles don't at all. Don't lie to me. I don't, don't hate me. the turtles. You are a liar, and you have no friends. 
Wow, you really had to hit me low on that one. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got to. You're a tall man. So you just defended the turtles by tearing me down. How do you <laughs> feel about that? Pretty good about myself. That's not nice. But I'd jump on it. I mean, you won't, but it is three ninety nine. Maybe the next issue, if it's the start of a new arc, I'll give it a shot. Sounds good. That's fair. So I'll see you in a month. Um, a book that there's shit happening, I don't understand what's going on, but it's awesome, is Coffin Hill. Very good title. I thought that was Hellcat. No, not Hellcat. Patsy Walker, everybody. Coffin Hill number six. Um, I'm not super. I'm not super sure. I even understand what's going on in this book. I mean, there's some sweet shit like this going on. Oh my gosh! Just crazy art. Um, some satanic stuff. Um, some some nudity. Some sideways pages. Ah, with nudity. With nudity. Why are there no nipples? That's kind of weird. Oh, there is. There's. There. There. Oh. Um, some more satanic stuff, a couple people die, a couple people get shot, a couple people get stabbed, some black stuff gets spit out of this girl's mouth, and then she gets arrested for killing somebody that I don't even know who it is. Like, the guy comes in, he's like, you're under arrest for the murder of Detective Dial Donovan. I don't know who that is. I have no idea who that is. And they made it seem like it was a big reveal. What issue is this? Six. Wow. And you don't you have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> but I like it. I like it a lot. I love reading it. The I don't want to say it's a secondary story, but maybe like the because it's not really the I don't even know what the main story is. I like. Uh, do you even I, read this book? No, no. I, I bring. I open it up. I look for nipples. I close it. Put it away. I do. The same. I don't really know what's happening, but I do enjoy it. I don't know. I like the witchcraft aspect of it. I like the the, the mystery slash horror aspect of it. Um, I wish I understand it a little bit more, but it involves her being a witch and this character that was inside of her that she left in the woods. I like it. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody because if I don't understand it, issue six, I don't think you're going to understand it, issue seven. Yeah, even I don't, though, even I don't though it's starting a new arc. The soul unquiet thing is the next. Arc. I feel like arcs don't matter in that the way you're just talking. I don't think there are <laughs> arcs, but I do like it. I, I don't know why. I hope there's other people out there who like it because I like it enough that I'll continue reading it, and I hope other people feel the same way. Um, you want to talk about that four ninety nine book? Oh you? boy, listen, DC. I know you don't listen to this, but stop milking Batman. Four ninety nine for this is outrageous, but I will say that it's. Worth four ninety nine? Yes. No. It, look how thick it is, first off. And there's so much. There's a little homage to the Dark Knight. Why? I don't know why. In every book. Every, book, every Batman the book, there's a homage to the Dark Knight. But this is Zero Year. You haven't been reading it, but the main story is... Haven't been reading it is an understatement. <laughs> Actively <laughs> avoiding it is the true statement. Uh, it's, it's Zero Year, and... I don't know what that means. Is that like... It's before year one. It's like oh no shit! First. Really, I think mind blown. Is it right when he became Batman? Well, is that what they're go to, next that is going to be a negative sweet, year. That was a sweet uh, panel there. The art, the art is beautiful. It has like this really weird, like, it? purple tones. Um, I think it's Greg Capallo. Oh, then of course it's going to be good. Yeah, it's Greg Capallo and Danny Miki are inking it. Um, it's a Riddler story. Probably the best Riddler story I've ever read so far. Uh, you've probably never read a Riddler story. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. But, like, every time... Hey, look, I, I do like the look of the art. Like, it's it's, a the, lot. it's the tone. Uh, you don't really learn a lot. I don't remember who this, like, crazy... Not Clayface guy, but... Apparently his son died looking through the desert to find Bruce Wayne when he, like, ran away. Wow. And, you know, he doesn't know Bruce Wayne's Batman. But, anyway, the Batman's trying to stop this Riddler... Because he cut the power, and he linked bombs to the dams, like the the levee walls. And he started a storm, and everything's flooding, like Gotham's flooding. And he got Gordon to try to stop the police from turning the power on. When they turn the power on, it plays in the Riddler's hands, and it blows up the levees, and Gotham's just flooding, killing everybody. But it's, it's really fantastic. And nice... Uh, it looks nice. I'll give it that. I would never pay for it nine for a Batman story. There's uh, his mom getting headshot. Look, I don't care what it is. I don't care. Actually, if it was Batman dying, I'd pay four hundred ninety nine to read that. But I know you hate Batman, but I'm gonna dig out this this arc and for real. It's 
he doesn't really brood a lot. Like most of it's action build up between. Give him. me some action. It's a lot of action. It's built up between him and uh, Commissioner Gordon. But I definitely recommend this if you're not on it. How did you feel about Deadpool number one, or number twenty five point now? Oh, I liked it. I think it probably had the best fight scene I've seen in a while. You mean Deadpool versus Crossbones? Yes. Which is the whole the whole story. It was. It was so good, but yeah. yet it was it moved the story along. Yes, it, wasn't it did. Just... It wasn't just stagnant battle scene. Um, I like the moment where he's just pounding his face and senseless, yes. and Sabretooth walks around the corner and he's like, "I smell Deadpool," and he's injured. Easy kill. And he's like, "I'll just come back <laughs> later," and he just turns around <laughs> and walks away. Like that's the comedy gold we're getting from this. And now him and Crossbones' favorite trucks when they were kids were garbage trucks. Yes, I was like, <laughs> yes. Um, I, all about it though. I like how he's more serious, uh, even though he's heading to nobody knows where. I feel like this should have been the last issue, and then the point one should have been the next exactly. issue, exactly, or, or the number one should have been the next issue. I don't understand how this is a number one because I feel like that was like the finishing wrap up. It, it was, was. Like killing the talents yes. from the last. And yes, I was like, what? I like it though. I like how he doesn't even have a suit on in the last couple panels. You rarely see Deadpool without a suit anymore. Yeah, getting cavity searched. Literally, because he has all those cavities on his body. Good one. Ooh. Um, you just read Black Widow. I did. Can I say, this is my pick of the week. Rightfully so. I love this book. Rightfully so. I love this villain who calls himself God's Hammer. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. And he just carries these monstrous guns around. I feel like that's what that book needed. It is. It, it needed she, a villain. She needs her own villain, and and it looks like that's who he is. And just everything about it is fantastic. I loved this book. I mean, I don't want to gush about my Phil Noto boner. But <laughs> we don't need to talk about Phil Noto. We understand. Was beautiful. We understand. Um, I love the Punisher type of fighting it was. Yeah. Because even though she was the underdog, Punisher isn't really always the underdog, but she knew how to fight. And, and she he, still got her ass kicked. He is a badass. He is. I wonder who he's working for. Though. That's kind of the big deal. Is he's answering to somebody. And it made me want to keep reading. Like I yeah. kind of regret not getting on this. I thought you hopped on this. No. No. I mean, you can read mine. You, you probably find him in dollar bins eventually. Yeah, hopefully it's con. But this dude is badass. I know. I love this dude. This is my pick of the week. Everybody, jump on Black Widow. This cover is fantastic too. He it looks is. like Rasputin. He does. Um, Avengers undercover number one. Uh, I kind of made a weird eh sound when I saw the cover there, but. Um, I didn't make you read it because it's continuation of Avengers Arena. Oh. Same guy, I think same artist, and it's just them dealing with the aftermath of Avengers Arena. Ar- Arcade let all of the footage out so everybody knows about it. Everybody watched it happen. And some of them are like going and doing talk shows and talking about it. Some of them are just like sitting in restaurants almost crying, hearing people talk about them. So it's Hunger Games. Um, You're reading the Hunger Games. But not Avengers Arena was Hunger Games. You're reading... The aftermath of Hunger Games. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, the one kid is trying is hunting down Arcade, and he thinks that he's in the place where the Masters of Evil are. He jumps down in there, and this dude is the dude who can like summon a demon spawn from his soul. He turns into this fucking soul devil monster. I, I, I call him. And as he jumps in there, we find out that as he's trying to beat him up, I think that's Hellstorm, son of Satan. Yeah, it looks like him. He can control the Satan monster. So now this monster is members with Baron Zemo, Madam Mask, oh my god, and Constrictor, part of this new Masters of Evil. Bringing up Ma- Madam Mask, I don't want to backtrack, but I'm pretty sure in the cover of Hawkeye 18 it has Madam Mask on. Well, I might have to hop on that, but she's in this now, and I'm super excited. Um, if Where's did... she been? Is she in hell? No, she's in this place just hanging out with the Masters of Evil, hanging out with Zemo. That's awesome. If you weren't on Avengers Arena, this will not make sense. Don't get it. If you were, definitely get it. Even though I fought Avengers Arena every step of the way. Did. I'm not reading this anymore. Um, X Factor number four. We're, we have no. This is gonna be a long one. I know. We had a lot. We had a of lot books. of books. Um, X Factor four. Danger. You remember I told you that the mutant danger. Yeah. I wasn't sure who she was. I remember now. I ran into her. She's the embodiment of the danger room. Oh. You remember? You, yes. You ran into her sometimes. Yes. Um, she's trying to destroy. The Techno Thief on Gambit's Thieves Island. Um, Gambit actually ends up kissing her to save her because she's trying to kill everybody and Gambit's like, this is all I know how to do! And he just kisses her. <laughs> um, then Gambit invites her to join the team. Ooh. Even though Polaris is not a fan of it, neither is Quicksilver. But it looks like, that you know, 
She is. She's part of the team. Polaris actually kills her in this. Really? Like, although Danger is, like, more of a te- technologically based being, so it just jumped to their ship, but Polaris ripped her apart without even words. Like, she just said, hey, what are you doing? And just ripped her apart. Polaris can control uh, magnetism, magnetism, metal, like yes. magnetism, metal, yes. Like Magneto. I thought so. Um, but Danger is pretty badass, and this book's pretty awesome. Um, if but don't hop on it now because you won't know what's going on. Um, I like the cover, back issues. You, you read X Men Legacy? Yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Uh, yeah, 17. up to fifteen, fourteen. Oh God, these are out of order. I'm sorry. What are you doing to me? Uh, twelve to fifteen. And uh, well, it wrapped up the Red Skull arc, which yes. ended up being a trick. Yep. Which was pretty fantastic. Still, that was kind of. I really didn't enjoy that arc yeah. as much. Then, 13 was, like, a weird, like, this arc was the like, weird British one, where he goes and, like... Sees his mom? Yes. Okay. At the end of 15, his mother gets killed. Okay. And yeah. he disintegrates those bitches, and he shows up at, uh, school Jean Grey, and is, like, having a weird moment with Blindfold, mm-hmm. and decides he wants to pay, um, Cyclops a visit for killing his father. Okay, and that's that's how it ended. That's how it ended. Oh man, are you in for a ride? Oh, it, this this British arc was so weird. Like I couldn't follow because it. because it's British. It's hard. It's it, you don't follow the the way they're talking. You can't follow what they're talking about. I know exactly what you what you mean. It was you remember that book I read that was fantastic, Number Cruncher. Yeah, it was so good. But if it wasn't British, it would have been so much better. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? It's just like the slang they use and all sorts of stuff. It was weird, but you can't doubt. You can't say it wasn't good. No, it was good. And I love um, his and Blindfold's relationship thing. Yeah. It's yes. fantastic. Like, yes. like they just be, like had, had, had to be one of the best in comics that year. Yes, last year I guess it would have been. Yes, um, but I'll keep chugging along. There's only like twenty left, huh? There's twenty issues. Twenty one. 24 total, 25 total. Okay, so I got... You got like 10 issues left. Um, I read number 1, 2, 3, and 4 of She-Hulk. Yes, you did. And, I mean, it, it just that's what I expected. I don't know what you wanted me to get out of this. I just I, wanted you to read it. I've them. read She-Hulk before. I haven't read this. Um, she, I mean, it's just a fun book all around. I, don't get me wrong, I like the way she looks in these. She looks very ample <laughs> in, in these... Um, the art's better than the current. Well, see, volume. I figured out. I, I thought about this. I'm ve- I'm much less critical on art in back issues than I am of current books I read. That makes sense. I don't know why, because first issue art was not bad. By the third issue, she looks like a different person every panel. Yeah, they yeah. switch her facial structure up every panel. You, but I feel like you had me in mind when you gave these to me because the second issue is Scarlet Witch. I was stoked. Yes. I believe that, is that when she can't transform? No, she transforms. She transforms? Yes, this? but she's hired as Jen Walters, not as She-Hulk. Yeah, and she can't transform when she's at the office. She, yeah, she's not supposed it's to. Not, yeah. It's found. I loved the Marvel Library. Yes. How they said all comics were legal documents because they have the comics code on them. It's I awesome. loved that. There's just little bits in here that they put in. I don't know if you caught it, but when they're being att- when she takes the boy to the Avengers Mansion because she got kicked out, she had to move. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get attacked by the gate. He gets attacked by the... Jarvis comes running out with a pot on his head. And this is after... Like, she says it's, like, carbonium steel. And he's like, you guys just make up words? <laughs> Jarvis runs out with a pot on his head, and she hulk says, what are you doing with that pot on your head? And he goes, it's for brushy and metal. Did you catch that one? It's for brush man from Not Brand Eh. Oh. That's for brush man. I was howling. <laughs> I was a knee slapper. I was loving it. That was such a great callback. I also love how they're single issue stories. Yeah, I love it. It's it's it's. There's no books now that do that, and every one of them, even though there's a linear line through them all, you get closure with every book. It's very well done. Dan Slott knows how to write She-Hulk. Yes, and honestly, that this miniseries, there's only twelve issues. It gets even better. Um, I heard the guy that does the art in the second half is a lot better than this guy. That's what I heard. Um. This is going to be a long one. Um, trying to, I got these here. It's either Pelletier. I don't know who does those ones. It's Bob Rillo. Uh, Bob Bobillo. He goes back on 7 and 8, but 5 and 6 aren't. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I liked it. I'm going to read what you brought. You're going to read more Legacy. Daredevil, Howard the Duck, 
She always has a Howard the Duck episode, and it's pretty fantastic. I thought of a new, um, new type of segment I want to do on here. Obviously not this week because we're get, we're going to be probably half hour over easily. Um, but I want to. It's going to be called like Bad Comics or something, and because you have a stack, everybody who collects comics probably has a stack oh, God. of comics that you just leave there, and you're never probably never even going to touch them. But I want to each week grab one book. You and I will both read the same book. And it's just it's going to be something bad. I mean, it might be good. It might, it might be. A, we might find gold. I'm in. I'm in. But we're gonna. It's gonna just be one book that we probably wouldn't touch in our collection ever. Transformers and GI Joe. Eh, worse. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and we're gonna read them, and then we're gonna talk about them on here. Um, we got news. Romita is gonna be drawing Superman. I saw the previous. I was so bummed out. Uh, I was I'm... so bummed out. It will depend on who's writing it, but I still will be just in a scowl the whole time I'm reading it. He makes him look less... Manly. Yeah. he's He looks like a cube. Yeah, he's not as... I don't, I don't even know, like... He looks like a cube. We can he go with looks cube, like a but cube. I feel like he's missing, like, what makes him Superman, like... Like his presence. Yes, that's, like, his, his gait and all that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird to me. That, that bummed me out, um... Earlier in the week, I read an article. Fox is scrapping all of the current Fantastic Four movie, and they were out searching for people to do to redo it. We're never getting a Fantastic. But listen, movie. no, I just read one earlier that said the Fantastic Four sequel has already been confirmed for July fourteenth, two thousand seventeen. So maybe this report that said they were searching out a creative team was for the sequel. That could be. That could be. Along with that, they've announced the Wolverine sequel, March 3rd, 2017. X-Men Apocalypse, May 27th, 2016. Uh, and some crazy mystery Marvel movie, July 13th, 2018. I feel like, now that Disney owns Marvel, I feel like they should just buy those rights back. I mean, they're, they're cash cows, though. You know how much money these, the, the Fox is making off of these? I, I get that. They're slowly getting them back. But obviously they're not letting go of Fantastic Four to at least 2018. But Disney could do so much better, and yeah. they could tie them in with. I agree. With the I also Marvel don't want, universe. but I also don't want Marvel Studios to be overworked. That's true. I mean, they are putting out a lot. Yeah, but in other Marvel news, Stan Lee did a, an interview with Playboy. Is he not dead yet? He's 91. God, he doesn't. He said, "Quote: I don't know who Ultron is." And then the article went on to say that Ultron's first appearance was in Avengers 54. Sounds right. I thought it was his first appearance was well, Avengers 54. I was going to tell us it's back. 57 is... 57 is Visions. Vision, so it's... Well, he quit writing Avengers in number 35. Stan Lee did. So he's like, oh, I have no idea what happened 20 issues after I stopped writing it. See, that's... He also said he doesn't know what his net worth is, and that he's constantly still suing Marvel all the time for character rights. And, he, and they asked him what his position in Marvel was. He goes, I'm just a pretty face they keep around for the public. He's neither of those. Stop it. I don't know why you hate Stan Lee. So I much. hate Stan Lee. He's I don't, garbage. I don't, I don't know why. I, he did his thing and he should just die. I, I don't mean, know why it's you're fine. I really don't know why you're mad. Oh, I really don't know why you're mad. You know I hate Stan Lee. Um, his voice, though. He's a nice voice. Last Tuesday, in, in lieu of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel had that show called Assembling a Universe. Oh, did you watch that? I watched the beginning where they talked about the history of the universe, like the Wave 1 and then Avengers. I left the room while they were talking about Captain America and Guardians of the Galaxy. Fair enough, fair enough. And I came back in to see art of Avengers 2. What I saw, they did like concept art of Avengers 2. Yeah. Hulkbuster armor. I saw um, like the prop for one of the I hands. Was, yeah. It was bigger than Oh, the... yeah. I was so excited. Um, I guess they also showed some Ant-Man. Which is just like that clip that we saw a while ago. Wow. I'm pumped about that. It does look awesome. Um, that Scarlet Witch concept art. I like it. And then the Quicksilver concept art. Don't like him. Um, it's better than the other Quicksilver. That's true. I'll give you that. <laughs> Can't argue with that. And then uh, I saw this and I just had to show you. It's, we spoke with Rob Layfield earlier. He's back in the comics. Oh, why? He's doing covers for the new Solar Man of the Atom. And I was scrolling down through this, and I'm looking at him like, all right, all right. I get about right here, which is about, like, you know, chest level, and I'm like, oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Get down, I was like, what is that poking out of his side? Why is this guy so thick? 
Oh my god. And I was like, you know what? It's still not that bad. It's not that bad. Feet! Oh my god! They are feet! What are they? Wow. They're not real feet. <laughs> Rob Layfield didn't draw them. Yes, he did. Layfield. Oh god. Oh, it's just, it, it's, you could tell it's his feet. Those are definitely Layfield feet. Layfield can draw feet when they're not standing or kicking. If they're floating, he's perfect. <laughs> Even though they're still pretty bad. Yeah. Um, in non-comic related news, let's talk about a piece of human garbage who died. Did you see? No. Fred Phelps died. I don't know who that is. Westboro Baptist Church. Oh girl, yeah, he God, finally died. The God hates fags guy. Okay, okay. That piece of human garbage passed away, excommunicated from his church, nobody was talking to him. I just wish that he would have realized his fault and his billies before he died. That's the big, that's the worst part. At least he stuck to his guns. I see all these things that say, like, let's, uh, let's picket his funeral. Wouldn't it be better if nobody went? Yeah, I think it'd be better. I mean... Ignore it. You know, you know what I mean? Don't Ignore give him it. what he... Yeah, don't give him what he, he did. He doesn't deserve any recognition, you know? I, I just, I saw somebody, uh, somebody said, rest in peace, rest in, rest in piss, Fred Phelps. <laughs> I hope a gay guy rapes your corpse. <laughs> it's horrible. It went a little far, oh, but, but it made me chuckle. I, I chuckled, too. Um, Secret Origins book. It's going to be four ninety nine. Yeah, I saw that. Not feeling it. I really want to hop on it. It looks really good. I'm not doing it for four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. I'm I'm not buying into this thing that they're doing. They because it's just a feeler. They're putting out a four ninety nine. If people are going to pay it, their two ninety nine books are going to be gone, and three ninety nine is going to be the minimum. Had I known that Batman book was four ninety nine, I probably wouldn't have got it. I can pick up a four ninety nine book here and there. I have fifty plus. 60 plus titles on my pool. I can't afford 4.99 books. Like I don't mind when they're annuals. I get it. They're thicker. I get annuals. That's annuals fine. are fine. But I agree. No. Not not you can't expect someone to pay that much. It bothers me. It does too and they don't care. So uh character creation time. Yeah. Character's name Heroin. Heroin. Like heroin. Heroin. Goes as follows. After Kirk Cobain did us all a favor. Oh my god. <laughs> After Kirk Cobain did us all a favor and blew his brains out, his body was taken by the government, reassembled, and they started experimenting on him as like a super soldier thing. And it took. Just stop. It worked. So he's alive, and he now has the ability to just build energy. But the problem is, the energy keeps building. He can't control it. It just keeps building inside of him. So they keep him heavily sedated to prevent it from happening. Eventually, the sedatives stop working. They just stop working. So he wakes up, and he's building, and he just he goes to score. Find some heroin. And it works. It sedates his, it sedates his energy. So he sits in this room, supplied, oh supplied with government heroin, and just bangs up all day to control this, this energy. He has to do the drug. Does, controls this energy inside of him from building until they need him for a mission. And they send him out with a team called the 27, which is comprised of Janis Joplin, oh, Jimi Hendrix, go. Brian Jones, Jim Morrison, and the new mem- newest member, Amy Winehouse. <laughs> and all of their powers revolve around them doing the drugs. Jim Morrison has to be completely hammered drunk to use his powers. That is fantastic. Jimi Hendrix has to be just ways on LSD, and he can shape whatever he sees into whatever he thinks he sees. That that's gold. That, yeah, I know. That's gold. I know. I I. What's 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 uh Kurt Cobain's power? He has that energy. But does he release it? Just it builds him. Yes, he can release it. Yes. Okay. And it's it's terribly strong, <laughs> super strong. So he's part robot too. No. No, he's just... His body can contain it because of the experiments. What do you mean? How'd they rebuild his face? It's government. <laughs> it's government. He, a... he has regeneration. Oh, oh, okay. So, wow. Wow. Gold. Gold. I was stoked. This happens to me every week. Is I'll sit here all, all, all week. I'll think, I need to write something, man. I need to write something. And then Thursday rolls around, and I'm like, hold on. And I'll just start writing. I'll be like, this is great! Ah! And I just scream to myself. Pounding out. Listen to Hole. I understand. I love Hole. See? And you know who the head of this corporation is? Courtney Love. Oh, God. Boom. You had to go there. It's all just a facade. She, puts, to, she, had, she puts up this facade. It was up here, and then he just took it no, to the ground. No, 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 no. She puts up this this facade of being the sloppy person. It's her secret identity. Her 
Secret That's identity. her secret identity. She is a genius level intellect who is the master <laughs> of this entire government corporation. Oh my god. Boom. It's not even a real thing. Boom. You, I, you win. I don't know what you win, but you win. Tell me you wouldn't. It would be awesome to see this team. I would read that for It'd wrestling. It'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. As much as I hate Kirk Cobain, obviously, and I mean, kind of hate Amy Whitehouse. I would love to watch it. I would love to read it. I would love to write it. It's like another the eighteen, it's not, but better. It's another one for the number one. So you need to make it. It's a Scott Young cover. Oh yeah, I I gosh, I didn't mean to get to that, but um, I dropped Bleeding Coal magazine. It went from two ninety nine to four ninety nine an issue. Or it might even one ninety nine to four ninety nine an issue. Dropped that. Dropped Superboy. Hopped on Sinestro. You did hop on. I did Sinestro. hop on. I'm gonna Sinestro. have to read it because I was looking through my subscriptions Tuesday, trying to find something to drop. I got nowhere. I got absolutely nowhere. I uh, second week in a row that our service, our comic book service, has failed to send me God is Dead. Second issue in a row. So eight and eight and nine, I don't, I didn't get. They're back ordered. It probably won't even fill them. It will. It's be well. That's the thing. You know how on our site we go on it tells you like note from our company of what it is. Yeah. There's nothing. It just says back ordered. Doesn't even say when it'll fill. It's because I wanted the Carnage wraparound covers because every every one of their covers is the same price. Then you're gonna be picky. You never get that. That's probably it too. Um, I got a I got a decent amount of books again this week. I, I did like fourteen too. books again this week. I got a crazy amount. Um, all right, so, I mean, we're going to have to cut these into two pods if we, if we have this many books every week. I know, right? <laughs> um, I def- there's definitely a four ninety nine book in my thing. I think it's an annual. It's Spider-Man annual. Well, next week, Buffy Season 10 starts. Mm. I am 50 issues behind, so... Whoa, hold on. 50 issues behind what? Buffy. Buffy, hold on. How many seasons of Buffy were there? There were seven television, and... Two season of comics. No. Yeah. There's a lot of Buffy. See, I, I need to read Smallville, because I feel like I'd get in the Smallville season continuations. It's fantastic that they continue into comics. Like, There's I kind of want to get Dexter that, Down I Under. I don't want to get Dexter Down Under. You don't like it? I just, I don't like what? You don't, you don't think it's a good idea? I feel like it, it's not like a continuation, it's just a one-off. No, I'm pretty sure it's a continuation. I don't think it? so. I don't want to spoil Dexter for anybody who hasn't heard it. Yeah, don't, don't. <laughs> but I mean I know how it ends. I do too. But we can talk about this off air then. Yes. That's probably for the best. But I we just care about you. We care about everybody. That's not except true. for Superboy. Or Kirk Cobain. You love Kirk Cobain. I'm, hey, hey, hey. I'm not biased. You are Kirk Cobain. <laughs> wow. You are. I am. I'm gonna go do some heroin I'm gonna explode. Just banging rocks. <laughs> I don't know if that means. <laughs> no one knows what I'm means. I'm glad though we took forty five minutes on our books this week. And then shot through everything else in ten. I know, guys. Speedy guns all. It's nice. Right? I, I mean, I like that. It, it seems more comics based this week. We had a ton of comics. And I feel like I started off slow, but I feel like we pulled it through at the end. Oh yeah, man. We're we're getting we're getting better. Um. Thanks for listening, though. And uh, yeah. Anything else? Well, hopefully, next issue will be a little higher production value. We've been talking about this. Let's let's just stop talking about it. And, and do it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to do it today, but then it started snowing. I was like, eh. yeah. Yeah, it's bad bad news on the weather. I wish it would just warm up already. Yeah, it would be nice. I just think if there's people listening to it, like looking out their window. It's like, oh, it's, it's Bright, sunny. sunny, Sean. Fuck off. Wow. We love people, guy. You can't. <laughs> no one's going to listen now. They already they already gave up. Oh, well. Um, but also, if you want to find us, we're now on iTunes under Earbone Comics. And it should update. Automatically, as, like it downloads it automatically. Yes, you can subscribe to it, which would be awesome. And hopefully that works. I, I put it together and I don't really know anything, so. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I don't know anything about where it even goes. I record it and you take it away. <laughs> That's what happens. I record it, you take it away. You're just like churning out babies. and I, I mean, it's all I got to do, man. I'm just the, I'm the workhorse here. I'm the, I'm the semen sack. Guy, I, pound, got, just, I got notes this week. Hold on. I just, I just called myself a semen sack. <laughs> you are a semen sack. <laughs> Your sack of semen. You're sir. a ball bag. Um, thanks for listening, as always, and uh, look out for Hero and and the twenty seven. <laughs> Later.